Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it has been a wonky morning. For whatever reason, the tech just decided that we weren't going to get any sound on our lovely equipment. So we are now going low tech, and you are on my cell phone, and Russ, who is a photographer and used to be a videographer, <laughs> It has the phone and he keeps slaying, so I'm sorry if you get dizzy. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to do our pastoral prayer, and then um, Jamie and Malik are going to sing a song, and then we will, um, I will share um, just a few bits of my sermon. So um, that's what we'll do now, and I just, I thank you for your grace and um, for just being um, grace-filled in this time of when technology doesn't work, and, and we pray that you will feel connected to God in this way. So let us pray. God of north, south, east, and west, I have been meaning to say thank you. Thank you for scooping up the dirt and breathing life into it. Thank you for forming this body, this life, this world, and God, thank you for forming these people. Thank you for drawing us in, for holding us up, and for weaving us together. Even when it's hard, even when it's difficult and wonky, God, especially when it is hard and difficult and wonky. If people ask us, where are you from, our mouths often speak of geography but our souls always sing your name. So today we come to you in prayer with gratitude overflowing. Gratitude for the places we've been, for the people who have shaped us and for the spaces that we call home. But we also come to you with prayers on our hearts. You know the prayers that we have on our hearts and that we've lifted up to you this morning. And so we ask you to scoop us up like you scooped up the dirt of that first day. Hold our hearts alongside our worries. Relieve us of this burden. Protect us in the palm of your hand. And draw us closer to one another as you do. God of creation, you have always been our first home. So hear our prayers for the spaces that we call home today. God, we are inviting you in. Come and see. God, come and be with us. And now with the confidence of your children who believe without hesitation, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art right in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
And so it's going to take some time to get to know one another, either again or for the first time, to build or to rebuild our relationships. And so with that in mind, we have this new series, I've Been Meaning to Ask. And it's built upon all these questions that encourage courageous conversations and a curiosity to truly listen to one another. Because in order to build connection and trust, we must listen to one another's stories and experiences to learn who and what has shaped us throughout our lives. And we also need to, to feel seen and to feel known by others. And perhaps just by one question at a time, we'll remember how to stay curious, to keep listening, asking and to keep seeing the face of God in one another. Now today's question was or is where are you from? Many of us at some point in our lives have been asked this loaded question. Part of my husband Russ's family is from India and Russ lived there for several years when he was little so the Indian culture is an important part of their family and their heritage. And so it's become an important part of, of my family. And when I'm out and I see someone who, and I meet someone who I think might be from India, I want to ask, well, where are you from? Or are you from India? Because I want to find that common ground with them. But I don't ask that question because I know that it's not always taken with the good intentions that I have. Often that question of, where are you from? It's an innocent question, but it's coupled with assumptions and judgments and even these microaggressions that can be felt upon the person who receives it. And it can be exhausting and painful. The person that is being asked the question has to decide, well, why is this person asking? Do they want to know about me and find common ground? Or are they trying to separate themselves from me and make me another or an other? But in this story, we see that we are, we are from common ground. That Adam, humanity, is from one, one place. That God formed humanity from the dust of the ground and breathed into their nostrils this breath of life, making Adam this living being. And we get this image of God as a potter, creating and carefully crafting and molding the different parts of humanity's body. The arms, our arms and our fingers so we can hold one another and cuddle one another ears to hear the birds, and eyes so we can see the beauty of all that God has created. And God took time to make sure that each part of humanity was just right. And then we see that God kneels over creation and like a bellows, breathes the breath of life into humanity. This breath is not just regular air, but it's God's breath of life. God shares God's own breath with humanity. And then God creates all kinds of trees that grow out of the ground, plants in the garden, and lets the rivers flow from this garden. And then later, God takes Adam and puts him in the garden to care for it. What we see in this story of Eden, of, of paradise, is this connection and inter interdependence. That Adam comes from the land, is sustained by what comes from the land, and then also serves the land. And we are reminded in this story that God has made all of us from the same substance. We all come from that dust. We all come from God's breath in our lungs. We literally come from common ground. We have a common home. We have a shared birthplace. And we have this collective calling 
to sustain and care for all of creation. And Miss Jenny talked about caring for creation in her children's moment, and that also means not just outside, what's outside and the birds and the trees and, and the oceans, but caring for God's creation means caring for one another, caring for our, our brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. And I shared a story um, that was from, it was a clip from a PBS show called Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. And it was about Queen Latifah and, and what she um, learned about her own ancestry. And we'll link that um, in the comments on Facebook and on YouTube and, and we'll make sure that it gets out there so you can listen to this story. And it's so transformative about how a woman frees, emancipates one of Queen Latifah's ancestors. And because that one woman saw Jack, her, it, Mary Old is the woman who frees this woman, Jug. And because she saw God's breath in her, she saw their, their common ground and connectedness, she freed an entire family line. And just how moving that was. That is holy and sacred work. To, to see mutual humanity and belovedness when we look at one another, to recognize that and to care for our fellow humans simply because we are united and interwoven. We are together in this. And so I pray that as you go through this week, that as you see people, people who you like, people who you don't like, people who believe the same things you do, and people who don't believe the same things you do, for all of those people that you see in the world around you, that you will look at that person and say, we are together. We are connected and we are loved by the same holy and beloved God. Amen and amen. I pray um, that this was at least a, a little supplement to you um, for this week and, and we we're, we're already have plans to, to figure out all the bumps and, and, and waves and whatever we want to call them. Um, and so that we'll be ready and ready to go for next week for worship. Um, but I pray that you will know that the Holy Spirit is with you and that you will go in peace and not in pieces. Amen and amen. See you later.